Welcome back to Face the Nation. For more on Afghanistan, we turn to Ryan Crocker, who served as the U.S. Ambassador to Afghanistan. Mr. Ambassador, good morning. Earlier this week, you said you had grave concerns about President Biden's capacity to lead. What specifically did you mean by that? What I meant by that, Major, is the way uh, not only uh, how his decision was made to withdraw, but then its execution, uh, which has been so far catastrophic. Uh, you know, we've got desperate people, American citizens, other Afghans we've helped, you name it, uh, doing anything they can to, to get out of Kabul. And we will all remember that those horrible images of uh, uh, Afghans who had clung to a wheel well on a C-17 uh, dropping out of the sky to their deaths. So uh, the, execute, the decision and the execution, and the execution in particular does not speak to competency. And when you talk about capacity, are you saying anything else outside of what you just articulated, meaning execution and decisions? Well, uh, Major, we got to be we got to be fair here uh, and and a little bit honest with ourselves. Uh, President Biden didn't create this whole scenario. President Trump did uh, by engaging the Taliban in talks without the Afghan government in the room. Uh, that began a process of delegitimization of the state and its security forces. Uh, that uh, was a uh, huge contributing factor to where we are now. I mean, that said. President Biden owns it. He, he, uh, he's taken ownership of the policy. He has taken ownership of uh, the envoy who negotiated this thing. So lots of blame to go around here, but it doesn't all fall on President Biden. You are deeply familiar with this region and many of the players. In the next week, Mr. Ambassador, what are you most afraid of? I, I am afraid that as the Taliban uh, gains more control, as they settle in a bit more, uh, they are going to go after uh, all of those in Afghanistan who have uh, uh, spoken the truth, uh, who have been in the media, who have represented the uh, institutions of this young democracy, um, and certainly those who have helped us directly like the interpreters. I'm very much afraid that this is going to get worse. The chaos may subside, but as it does, I am terribly worried you're going to see uh, the Taliban uh, start to methodically take care of those they consider their enemies. We will be in no position to help them. Mr. Ambassador, as you're probably well aware, many members of Congress, senators and House office members are creating, if you will, satellite state departments, trying to use whatever means they have, email, cell phone calls, to try to work on behalf of either constituents or those that they have come to know in Afghanistan to get them out. What does that say about the functionality of the current State Department? Well, with respect to State Department personnel, I mean, we um, among my heroes are those state people out at the airport right now um, uh, doing everything they can to make this process work faster and to work better. That said, there are capacity problems. Those on the front lines did not create those problems and are not in a position to fix them. But it's just incredibly important that we concentrate now on getting those folks out. Look, right as we speak, um, I am involved in an effort to get uh, uh, a particularly prominent person out of that uh, country before it's too late. It's kind of like the Dunkirk evacuation. Uh, so uh, it's again, it's a, it's a really rough time. It didn't need to be this way. Look, Mike McCall, ranking member of the House Foreign Affairs Committee, and I did a joint op-ed uh, at the beginning of May of when we said, here's what the administration needs to do if they're going all the way out, which we opposed. Uh, you know, they, they, they've got to have a way to get uh, intelligence capabilities offshore that are going to work and keep our nation safe. They've got to take care, obviously, of American citizens. They've got to take care of the interpreters. They have to take care of those women and girls who are particularly vulnerable. You know, we, we, we put all that out there. Again, uh, three and a half months ago, none of it was acted on. I'm going to give you three countries, China, Pakistan, Russia. Have the events of the last two weeks made America weaker vis-a-vis -vis those three countries? It has created a global crisis, quite frankly. Uh, uh, it has emboldened uh, violent uh, Islamic radicals. Uh, and I think we're all going to see the fallout of that. 
certainly in Pakistan. They championed the Taliban because they felt they had no choice. Well, the Taliban victory, the narrative of defeating the, the, great, uh, the great infidel empowers radicals in Pakistan that they're going to have to deal with if they can. And that's a country of 220 million people with nuclear weapons. China has its Uyghur Muslim population uh, in its West. They're tuned in. Um, they're, they're, uh, they're definitely looking at what happened in Afghanistan. Uh, and of course, the Russians have their own Muslim populations in very violent places in the past, like Chechnya. So they uh, might be doing a little bit of high-fiving. Uh, but boy, it's not going to last because what is happening in Afghanistan isn't going to stay in Afghanistan. Uh, this will be felt around the world. Brian Crocker, former ambassador to Afghanistan on behalf of the United States government, coming to us from Spokane, Washington. We thank you, sir, very much for your time and expertise.